All right, welcome everybody. Um, as I mentioned a minute ago, this is Rob Brown. I'm the founder of Encore Partners. And if you're here to learn uh, the four steps to attracting and keeping, um, I crossed out ideal because I really like to think of them as ultimate, ultimate clients, uh, you're in the right place. And today uh, we're gonna talk about the ultimate client attraction system. Um, so you might be thinking, who is this presentation for? Did I sign up uh, for the right gig? Uh, well, if you're a successful advisor um, and you're looking for ways to kind of discover what's next, how you're going to continue to make a difference uh, with your business, um, you're in the right place. Um, maybe you've hit a plateau in your business and you need to get unstuck and you know there is no silver bullet. Uh, you're in the right place, um, but we're going to show you some tools today that will help you get unstuck. If you're looking for more ideal, or as I like to call them, ultimate clients, uh, so that you can work with clients that you truly enjoy, uh, you're on the right call. Um, if you're tired of fighting with time, I know I've been scrambling this week, I need to take some of my own advice, but if you're tired of fighting with time and want to get more done in less time, uh, continue to grow your business, and we're going to talk about that today. And um, as it was kind of billed in the preamble to this event, if you are worried about these turbulent markets um, and some of the unprecedented changes that are going on in the industry today um, and how that impacts the way that you grow your business, attract uh, your most ideal clients, uh, you're in the right spot. So, so this is who uh, this webinar, this web training session is built for. Um, my promise to you today is to give you some ideas that will help you build a powerhouse service model that will dramatically increase your ability to tr attract your most ideal clients. And when you get this right, it does mean less stress, more fun, standing out from your competition, which is a big deal these days, and uh, creating the business of your dreams. Um, as I was putting these slides together, it, it dawned on me that sometimes as we have these conversations about um, our businesses, and I'm talking with financial advisors every single day of the week, whether you're my clients, um, and there's some, some of my clients on this call, I appreciate you all uh, being here, or you're somebody that is considering working with us, or you just want to come in, kind of listen in with some new ideas. I'm talking with folks like you all the time, and I realize there really is a stark contrast in the business today. As I see it, there are a lot of practices that are in jeopardy. No, they're not going to close tomorrow, um, but they're in jeopardy. And then there are businesses or clients that I work with that are going to grow no matter what happens with the market, no matter how the industry regulations change. Um, and the contrast is the difference between you know, having no vision for your business, no joy, and having the business of your dreams. And I believe that having the business of your dreams is really possible. Um, having a business that accepts all comers, you know, you take on any prospective client that may come your way because you don't know where your next new client is coming from versus those who are truly selecting the clients that you choose to work with and those clients look like your best clients, your ultimate clients. Um, there are those of you who uh, work in practices where your clients don't want to come in to see you, the meetings that you're holding, uh, well, maybe hopefully not on this call, but I see it. Their clients don't want to come in. They're skipping reviews because they're tired of the same old, same old. They're not holding up their end of the deal, but the practices that are going to grow no matter what is full of those clients that have respect and responsibility and they realize that they have to hold up their end of the deal. And the practices that are in jeopardy are the practices where growth is a crapshoot. There's no plan for it versus the practices that grow no matter what because they're looking at things that will help them grow consistently uh, year after year after year. That's the contrast. That's the difference that I believe you can make in your businesses if you're willing to put some of the ideas that I'm talking about today to work. So with that in mind, I have a couple of simple requests for you. First of all, turn off your cell phones. Um, stick them in your pocket unless you happen to be watching this webinar on your phone. It's very important to keep it out. But 
but, but turn off your cell phones. Try not to multitask. Shut down your um, web browser or your email system so that you can really focus on this program because I'm going to give you ideas that you can literally put to work today. This presentation is not a sales pitch. And I'd really love for you to stick around to the end because I said a couple of minutes ago, for those of you who are on the line, I'm going to talk about something brand new that I'm doing that I'm really excited about, and I think uh, you all will be excited about it as well. Um, as my last kind of housekeeping item, I'd like to mention that in you'll see in the um, handouts section of the of the GoTo meeting uh, or sorry GoTo webinar toolbar, there is a handout, and that handout is the client optimization worksheet. Many of you had that emailed to you um, in advance um, of this web session, and I'd encourage you to um, to pull a copy of that out because it'll be a great place to take notes as I'm going uh, through the presentation. So um, you can get it um, through the GoTo meeting or GoTo webinar um, toolbar, or you can uh, pull out that copy that you already received. Um, I'm going to ask some questions during the course of this event, uh, as I did earlier, and I'd appreciate it if you just kind of throw your answers into the question box um, so that I can see um, what kinds of things you all are thinking as I ask the questions uh, throughout uh, th throughout the, um, the course of the conversation today. So that uh, that kind of um, sums up the, uh, the the preparation, if you will, to really dive into the content. Um, and as we dive in, um, I want to I put this slide out there because I, I'm curious to, to some of these comments reflect the way that you're thinking about your business today when it relates to bringing in more of your most ideal clients uh, and taking um, the absolute best care of them, serving them the best you possibly can. You see, I've been running a, a survey for the last couple of weeks. Some of you may have participated, and I've been asking, what is the number one challenge advisors are facing today when it comes to bringing in ideal clients? And these are some of the things uh, that you told me, that it's more difficult than ever. Um, that it's hard to prospect because you're so busy with uh, delivering service and with a full book. You know, how do I have time for um, client acquisition, let alone ultimate client um, acquisition? Um, how do I get in front of potential ideal clients as frequently as I would like to, and then find a time find time for follow through so you don't let people slip through the cracks? Um, I've had a couple people say, "Well, I'm I'm growing by." referral only, and I think that's great. You know, I was joking with um, a colleague of my Colin the other day, I was saying, you know, is referral only a good thing or a bad thing? It's a good thing if you're getting good, consistent referrals to the right kind of ultimate clients, ideal clients, uh, but it's a bad thing if you're relying on referrals and you don't have a system for getting them in and getting the right number in regularly. Uh, some of you have told me that you have trouble finding prospective ideal clients in the first place. I'm going to help you with that today. Uh, and then finally, the last comment that I thought was important to, to, to talk about for just a second is getting past the natural apprehension current clients and referrals have to help make introductions. Well, if you implement the ultimate client attraction process that we'll talk about, that will be easier. That apprehension uh, will be lessened. It may not go away, but it'll be lessened. It'll be more effective in getting the right kind of introductions. Uh, as I said when we started, um, my name is Rob Brown, and I am the founder of Encore Partners. Um, I don't know um, everybody on this call. There are a lot of new folks out there today. I'm really happy to meet you. I'm also happy to be on the call with some of my, uh, some of my elite clients. It's great to be with you. I am in a, a strategic advisor to elite financial advisors. I've been in uh, the financial services industry for about 30 years. Um, I had my own very successful practice with my partner um, in our team uh, for about 25 years. I sold that practice about um, seven years ago. So I've been in the trenches working, um, doing the things that you do on a daily basis. So I know where a lot of this comes from. 
But at the same time, uh, during my career, I've also had the opportunity, while being an advisor, to actually say grace over about 250 other advisors. I was um, the chief business development guy, one of the top executives in a firm uh, headquartered up in, um, in Richmond, Virginia. So I was able to uh, build a great private client business and uh, help lead a firm at the same time. And I mention that because um, it's important to me that I've been able to do that. People have pointed out to me the fact that that is one of my uh, great skills. I'm able to take what I know from uh, from being an advisor and applying it um, in a lot of ways and get a lot of stuff done. And I think that's a big reason my clients are so successful. Uh, one of the reasons I call um, this web, this, uh, web training um, ultimate client attraction is that I wrote a book last year entitled Delivering the Ultimate Client Experience. And that book is based on the premise that when you build your business around your ultimate clients, deciding what an ultimate client is, how you're going to take care of them, that every aspect of your business include, improves, including acquisition of new ultimate clients. So that's, that's the genesis from, a, a, from where a lot of what I'll talk about today comes from. Um, as I do these, um, <clears throat> these web trainings, one of the things that uh, people will say is, well, you know, I can't get much out of an hour. Um, you know, you tell me this is going to be actually going to be lots of good ideas, but, but I don't believe it. Um, well, I want to share with you um, three testimonies I've received in the last week um, following my last web training. Um, this advisor said, you brought really good energy, enthusiasm, and inspiration without the superficial glitz and sizzle. You are an effective educator. Your examples help bring home some of your main points. This is totally actionable. Um, another attendee said, wow, I can't believe you gave me so much insight and didn't ask for anything in return. Now I understand why you're so good at what you do. I have some great ideas I can put to work today. Again, actionable. That's what I'm going for today. And the final one, an advisor told me how he was amazed and how I was able to deconstruct um, his business during the course of that hour in a way that really helped him. He said the presentation was a tick above extraordinary. Never heard that comment before, but it sounds pretty good. So that's what I'm promising you today and a big reason I want you to stick around um, until the end. But I have to tell you, um, in my business, even though I've talked about a lot of success, even though I feel blessed and I know that um, I, I don't like to complain about when things were tough. In fact, you know, when you do a web train like this, it's encouraged that you talk about um, how things didn't go well at some point in time in your career. I don't like doing that. But, but my business is, has been awesome most of my career, but I've had some challenges. It wasn't always as rock solid as I make it sound um, with some of the comments that I've made so far. Um, I can remember taking over a branch office first management opportunity I had uh, while still producing and taking on a branch that was destined for failure. That's why they gave it to a young rookie producer who um, thought he was smarter than he actually was. And as I went into that branch and as I started working with the people around me, I realized the best way for me to lead was to lead example. And I put systems in place that allowed me to triple my business over the course of two years while running this branch and having the revenues of that branch double during that same two-year period of time. So I struggled. It was hard. It was tough. Um, and that's, that's the kind of energy and ideas that I bring to this. And the reason, the reason that I was able to kind of pull through those tough times and continue to grow and help others grow is I built a system. Um, and I call my system the Encore Perpetual Growth System. Um, the ideas behind my system are to help you stand out from the crowd, have happier, more ideal clients, greater freedom, more profits, more income. That's what the system is all about. Um, and this is what my system looks like. Those of you who have worked with me for a while uh, recognize this mind map. Uh, the word encore uh, or the letters of the word encore represent each of the six stages of the encore approach. Engage, navigate, cultivate, 
orchestrate, reciprocate, and evaluate. Um, we're not going to have time um, on this call today to go through each one of the stages, but as I share with you those four steps for attracting more ultimate clients, um, I will show you how that comes out of this overall approach that I use to help my clients grow world-class businesses, the businesses um, of their dreams. Um, and uh, but before I kind of jump into the first of the four steps, I want to I want to point something out that's really important about my approach, about my Encore system. My Encore system is predicated on the fact that sometimes we ask the wrong questions. We ask questions about things that we're trying to accomplish um, in a way that doesn't allow us to really get to the heart of how to fix what we're working on. Maybe we'll ask a question saying, why can't we get our business to grow like so-and-so? He's a great producer. She's a great producer. And she does this. Um, well, when you ask a question like that, what you're trying to do is do something that somebody else has done that fits their business, but it may not work for you, or you may not really understand everything that's behind it. So it's important uh, to be able to ask the right questions. And as we go through uh, this presentation, I'm going to reframe some of the traditional questions that you might be asking about attracting more ultimate clients um, so that you get the right answer for you because this system uh, will work for you no matter where you are um, in your business. So as I mentioned a minute ago, the Encore um, system uh, begins with Engage. And quite simply, uh, Engage is all about establishing a clear vision around the why you do what you do. Not the what you do or how you do it, but the vision around why you do what you do. And a big part of why you do what you do goes to um, your ultimate clients. Who are your ultimate clients? Who are the people that you enjoy working with the most? And if you could only work with one type of person, um, that's the kind of person that you would like to work with. So as we think about the four steps today, and we think about the engaged stage of my approach in defining uh, your ultimate clients, I want to ask this first question. And this question isn't, um, how you will bring in new clients, or will you take on every client that you come across? It is, will you build and grow your business with the clients you choose to serve? See, I think when it comes to building your business around your ultimate clients, you are choosing your clients. They are not choosing you. The reality is there are more people out there that need the help of the type of people, the type of advisors and lead advisors who are on this call than you can possibly serve. And those of you who have books full of clients uh, that are unwieldy and you can't keep up with them all, you get this. So as you think about growing and adding new relationships to your practice, you have to choose them. You have to have a system for choosing them. And that's what the ultimate client process is all about. So um, if you have your worksheet handy, you might want to take some, or, uh, take some notes here. Um, there's a section about defining your ultimate client relationship at the top of the page. Um, but I want to, I want to get, you to be, get you to think about defining your ultimate client by um, asking you uh, a series of questions or making a series of points because, you know, there's this, there's this, um, this industry is full of kind of buzzwords, things that we come up with that become popular and then they become so popular uh, they get watered down and they don't mean anything. Uh, things like, um, you know, wealth advisor, you know, was a, it was a, sort of an elite term for a while. Uh, but now as time has gone along, a lot of people are calling themselves wealth advisors and they do nothing but the sort. Um, ideal client is something that is very similar to that. Um, there are these kind of industry definitions of what is an ideal client. Um, and, and it's a good foundation, but it's not the be-all and end-all of growing your business. Um, I don't want you to be thinking about just your ideal client. I want you to take that a step ahead. Um, if you're thinking about this in terms of dollars and cents, 
um, your ultimate clients may be the top 20% of your top 20%. I mean, think about this. How much would your business grow if you just duplicated the top 20% of your top 20%? I bet you it's a huge number. Uh, but sometimes that num the number, those people in that top 20% of the top 20%, aren't the right people. They really aren't your ultimate clients because, frankly, they're jerks. Um, and you put up with them. They don't respect you. They don't um, do all the things that you say they do. You're just somebody that they use to get stuff done. Um, and and that's, that's a hard place to be. Um, and those clients sometimes you feel like they're holding you hostage. Um, and you're telling yourself, I'll get rid of him one day. I'll get rid of him one day. But that day never comes because the assets are so big or the fees are so big that you just can't seem to do it. If that's happening for you and your business, those aren't ultimate clients. Uh, they may be a means to an end, but if you go through the ultimate client process, those jerks, those people who hold you hostage, won't be part of that top group of clients uh, for much longer. Another way to be thinking about um, your ultimate clients, they're the people that fall into the niches or the target markets and the professions that you serve because you get what they do. There's just something about uh, the people in that, in that niche, in that group, uh, that you really enjoy working with. It's not a, and it's not a big, wide thing. It's not you know, retirees or pre-retirees. It's very specific people. You know, maybe it's a certain type uh, of position or a certain type of entrepreneur. Maybe it's a, um, an, uh, an internet entrepreneur, somebody who works online all the time. You get what they do and you really like working with them. That's another way to potentially define your ultimate um, client. Likeability matters a bunch. Uh, think about it this way. When you see the phone ring and the number or the name of a client comes in, which calls are you the quickest to pick up if you're the one that answers your phone? Which of the calls are you the quickest to pick up? If it's an ultimate client, you pick up the phone, you'd be willing to pick up the phone um, every time. And then a final way to think about your ultimate clients is uh, do they want you to succeed? Are they truly advocates for their business? They do things to help you, uh, whether it's introductions or referrals um, or just the way that they treat you in a way that they're doing things that you know is going to make you successful. Um, that's, that's critical, a critical first step in this four-step process is understanding who your ultimate client is. It's not the same for everybody. And I'm amazed when I go through this exercise uh, with advisors that I coach, how sometimes their definition of an ultimate client changes the more they take the time to think about the people that they would like to work, they like to work with the most. Um, <laughs> one of my clients, uh, Ron, uh, an advisor in Omaha, I wrote this testimonial. Actually, it's, it's on my, my book, Delivering the Ultimate Client Experience. And his comment was, uh, my approach to the ultimate client experience is a roadmap that takes you to the promised land of how we should all be running our businesses and serving our clients. How we should all be running our businesses and serving our clients. You see, Ron took the ideas that I've used, I used to write Delivering the Ultimate Client Experience and put them to work in his practice in a way that has allowed his business to grow beyond where he ever, ever thought he could grow. He's an incredible advisor. Um, but uh, as I was um, putting the finishing touch on his presentation, I'd already thrown Ron's picture up. You know, one of the things that dawned on me was a conversation that I had just a couple of days ago. Um, a client, a former client of mine, we had worked together for about a year. Um, we were kind of in a, uh, in a break period. We weren't working together. Uh, but when we initially worked together, um, he was insistent on keeping every single client and um, not um, breaking the segments of the clients that he works on down too far because he's afraid that because he worked in what he considered to be a relatively small town, that he would alienate some of his clients or some of the people that knew him. He thought that would be bad for his reputation. And the reason he called me after not talking for a while was he, he wanted to admit that finally, after a year of working with me and a few months of not working with me, as he really looked at his business and, and how he was spending his time and who he liked working with, that it really made sense 
not necessarily to jettison those clients that weren't his ultimate clients, but to build everything around his ultimate client so he wasn't watering down the attention that his best clients got. Um, and so that's one of the big things that happens when you're delivering the ultimate client experience and you're working on the four-step client, ultimate client attraction system. So here's, very quickly, um, step number one. We've already talked about it, or I've already talked about it. Um, define your ultimate client. Um, you can use um, the worksheet that's in this workbook um, after this uh, webinar is over. Uh, we'll be sending some follow-up info that may also help you with that. Um, I'm also going to talk about another way that I can very specifically help you with that. But number one, start this four-step process by getting a very clear definition of your ultimate client. Orchestrate is um, the phase of the Encore system that focuses on ultimate clients. In fact, um, my book, Delivering the Ultimate Client Experience, um, came from the Orchestrate phase of the Encore approach. Uh, Orchestrate's where we really talk a lot about how we'll deliver service to clients so they become advocates for our businesses and then in turn they can help our businesses grow through additional opportunities with them or through selective and consistent referrals. So um, as we think about the second step of the four steps today, I want to ask you another question. Do your ultimate clients know who they are and how they are being served? Who they are and how they are being served. It's a critical question to think about when it relates to your practice. It is human nature to take people for granted. Um, I, I see it in all aspects of lives, with families and businesses and churches, where we just get to know people and we forget kind of how we know them and, and what they do and what's different about them. And that's true for your clients, too, even your best clients. They don't know how they're being served. They just take the way that you communicate with them, the way that you service with them, or the way that your team interacts with them for granted. But they couldn't spell it out in terms of any sort of you know, communication numbers or, or um, express it necessarily in a way that they could repeat it to somebody else who might be interested in being introduced to you. And that starts because a lot of them don't know who they are. So as part of this ultimate client attraction process, I want you to be thinking about that question. And the reason that I want you to think about that question is because there's another question that comes right behind it. Is your service model repeatable, memorable, and referable, or do you fall into the danger zone of being a me too advisor where what you do sounds a lot like what your competition down the street does. Again, I see this over and over again, especially as I meet new advisors who I'm considering bringing into a coaching or a consulting relationship. Those me too businesses are the ones that are they're really um, suffering uh, because their ultimate clients don't know who they are and what they're getting from their advisor. But when you take the time through the ultimate client attraction process to reach out to each one of your ultimate clients and talk to them about their importance to your business, speak to them about, remind them of what your service model looks like. And, and don't just do it once. Maybe you mention in a meeting, send in a letter, you make it part of your ongoing communication. What that does is that helps them ingrain in their minds what you do so it is repeatable, it is memorable, and it is referable. Uh, I was working with an advisor a couple of years ago who got a call from a referral uh, that wanted to come into his office because he said he heard um, this advisor's clients talking about him during a lunch conversation. So he was eavesdropping on somebody else's lunch conversation, heard the advisor's name, and then went and spoke with the person that was mentioning that name and said, would you refer me to your advisor? And the advisor was all worried because he didn't know 
the basis for the referral, what the client had said. When the referral came into the office, what he said was, I was impressed by the way your client could tell um, his friend exactly what you did for him from the standpoint of delivering service and communication. He had made his service model repeatable, memorable, and absolutely referable. And that is at the essence of this. And so as I work with clients helping them build their ultimate client attraction success, we, we have a series of exercises that we engage in that will allow those uh, advisors and their clients to get back on the same page, know who they are and what they do. Um, I'm not going to read this slide, but it's just another example of a client of mine, Michael, out in Kansas City, um, who also was kind enough to put a, a testimony on my book that talked about the fact that by delivering the ultimate client experience, implementing that in his business, uh, and, and in this case, it truly was letting his ultimate clients know who we are, everybody won. His team won, the clients won, and his business grew because he was more effective at telling his story in a repeatable and memorable way. So this is step number two. If you're taking notes, write this down. Let your ultimate clients know how important they are to your business. Let them know how important they are to your business. It's, a, it's an incredibly important step, and I'll show you in a minute how to uh, build on this um, even better. And actually, I was just looking at my notes, and I realized as I was mentioning this step, I forgot one thing. Um, every time I go through this exercise uh, with one of my advisor clients or I hear of an advisor client who one of my presentations and, and put this idea to work. There are almost always quick wins. When you take the time to let your clients know how important they are to your business and remind them what you do, good things happen. More money seems to surface, new business opportunities, or referrals happen. Just, just the, the very nature of that conversation can give your business um, an incredible lift. So I really in, in, um, uh, encourage you to take the time, sorry for flipping through these slides so fast, to let your ultimate clients know how important they are to your business. Uh, and this brings me to um, the third area that I want to talk about today. Um, Navigate is the stage of the Encore system um, that's all about setting meaningful goals and priorities with emphasis on meaningful. Um, this business is full of people who think that setting goals, writing big business plans, is somehow going to lead to new business. Um, yes, it can, but only if it's meaningful, only if it's realistic, only if it's actionable. So as part of the four-step ultimate client attraction process, you have to think about how will you establish goals that will let you know that you have achieve the results that you're striving for. So that comes from the navigate stage. And the question that I want you to be asking yourself is, uh, and we're going to do calculations in a second, how many ultimate clients will you add to your practice? How many ultimate clients will you add to your practice? You see, there's a question that's asked the wrong way in this industry a lot. It's all about, you know, What's your goal for new assets? What's your goals for growing your fees? What's your goal for growing your revenues, your commissions? Whatever it might be. And we throw out these really big numbers. And big numbers are then um, are, are just thought of as being something that we can somehow uh, achieve. Uh, but but it, it complicates the situation. It, it isn't easy to say, I want to bring in $50 million. I want to bring in $20 million. I want to bring in $100 million and not be able to relate it back to how many ultimate clients you will add to your practice. But if you start by thinking about how many ultimate clients you will add to your practice, you'll get to the right number when it comes to assets and revenue. So what is the best way to set growth targets for your business? I would submit today that it's thinking about how many ultimate clients you will add to your business to get the type of growth that you want, that you need for your business. Um, I apologize. This 
slide may be a little bit busy, and I'm not going to go through every number on it. But I want to want to go through an exercise that is referred to in the um, ultimate client optimization worksheet that you all have, uh, where I try to help clients do some math that that, that right sizes um, what you're doing. Um, and this was an example that I didn't uh, I didn't pick an example out of you know, one of the best examples that I could possibly think of. I just decided to show you um, some numbers that came out of a conversation that I had with an advisor that I began working with earlier this week. Um, the key number to look at, the key numbers to look at here as far as I'm concerned, is this particular advisor said that 47, 22% of his clients um, are ultimate clients. That he is confident that if he only could work with people that fell into, the, into that definition, um, his business would be a lot more fun, a lot happier, and he'd grow more quickly. Those 47 clients represented 80% or represent 80% of his business. So it's a classic or almost classic 80-20 model. Um, and as I work with advisors, I find over and over again it's impossible to escape uh, the 80-20 model, although in some cases that number gets skinnier when we really hone in even deeper on ultimate clients. It might be 90-10 um, or, or 95-5 even. Um, there are a lot of different ways to look at that number, but for, for example purposes, I just want to talk about an advisor who I met this week, 47 ultimate clients generating 80% of his business. So he has a big decision to make, what I call the ultimate client decision. 162 of his clients, that's 78% of his clients, represent a very small percentage. $225,000 um, of his business. So he's working with 47 clients and generating 80% of his business and working with 162 clients and generating 20% of his business. That has major impacts on him as an advisor, the service that he delivers, and on his team. Um, and when I talk about this, I'm not talking about saying let's throw away $225,000 in revenue, but that is an inflection point, a decision point that you have to consider when you're looking at your business. Um, as we look at those numbers, I like to do some uh, projections and thinking about ways that, you know, what happens if, what would happen if you did decide, hey, you know, tomorrow I'm going to get rid of 162 clients so I can just focus on my ultimate clients and get rid of a lot of headaches. In this advisor's case, we did the math. It only takes 12 clients that have the same level of revenue generation as his ultimate clients to replace 162. In fact, 23 clients, 23 new ultimate clients would replace 162 plus, uh, give him a 20% growth rate. And that kind of goal of moving for that kind of growth factor is something that could be accomplished in three to 18 months, uh, depending on how you work on it. I work with an advisor. I, I put a video up my website um, several months ago uh, with an advisor who was able to increase his assets under management by using some of the same logic by 50% in three months, just by being very clear on his on who his ultimate clients are and making the ultimate client decision in a way that made the most sense uh, for his business. Um, it's not the same for everybody, and we'll talk about some more details of this as we go along. But this is critical information uh, to keep in mind. What is that decision factor? What does that decision factor look like for you? So that's it. That is step three of the four step ultimate client attraction process. Calculate your ultimate client growth factor and create a timeline. How soon do you want to bring in? that specific number of ultimate clients you want to add to your business to get your business to where it wants to be. And this might seem like an overwhelming thing, and we'll get into some details here in a second. It doesn't have to be that complicated if you use the right type of client attraction strategies. So calculate your ultimate client growth factor and timeline. The exercise on the worksheet are a great way to get started on that calculation. 
So this brings me to the, the fourth area that I want to talk about today, which comes out of the cultivate stage of the Encore system. Cultivate is all about client acquisition, ultimate client acquisition where possible. So when we're talking about cultivate uh, with uh, clients of Encore, we're talking about how you can bring in the right type and the right number of new relationships. Uh, but before you can find, make the final decisions on the right type, or after you make the decision on the right type, I'm sorry, after you make the decision on the right type and the right number of clients, um, you need to then make sure that your pipeline is set up in a way that you're going to be able to achieve your ultimate client goals. Too often when I talk with advisors about the concept of saying, you know, if I just brought in, you know, 10 new relationships that would move the needle on my business, I'd really be happy. I just need 10 new ultimate client relationships. And I'm like, great, that's awesome. I'm glad you have that goal. I'm glad you understand the type of client that you're trying to bring into your business. Now let me ask you, how many clients or prospects active prospects, people who said that they want to have a conversation with you about doing business, do you have in your pipeline? And I'll get a number like five. So they want to bring in two new clients for every one prospect they have. Uh, in my way of thinking, that's backwards math. Or they'll say, I have a hundred prospects. And I'll say, well, how many of those are really qualified to be an ultimate client? Or are they just Suspects. Do you really know that they have an interest in continuing to work with you? So I call that right sizing your pipeline. How do you square your pipeline up against your goal for bringing in new ultimate clients so that when you activate your client acquisition systems, um, that you will uh, achieve your goals and achieve them in a way that doesn't keep you uh, burning the candle at both ends, doesn't keep you wasting a lot of time and a lot of money because um, that's where the question gets asked the wrong way when it comes to client acquisition, to the uh, cultivate stage of the Encore process. People are thinking about how many different activities can I be going, doing in my business so that I can get the kind of growth that I want. In other words, how can I throw as much stuff and as many people up against the wall as I possibly can so that a few ultimate clients, or maybe not even ultimate clients, uh, trickle out. That's wasted prospecting, wasting money, wasting time, spending time where it doesn't matter. The right question is, the right question when it comes to ultimate client attraction is, what is your single best method for ultimate client attraction? This doesn't mean that you will necessarily only have one, although most uh, advisors that I work with end up with just one method, but what is your single best method for ultimate client attraction? How will you make that happen? And let me, let me explain how this relates specifically to the pipeline, going back to the example I was using a bit, a little bit ago about, about the ultimate client decision. So, in the case of the advisor, and I'm just, I'm just going to go down the right-hand side, the 20% uh, growth side, just replacing clients and sitting flat um, doesn't sit well with me. I think you've got to put your business in a position that it's going to grow and grow consistently at at least a 20% level. So let's look down that right-hand column. So in this ultimate client decision, remember, we were trying to find a way to not only replace the revenues from 162 non-ultimate clients, we were also trying to grow by 20%. And that meant that this advisor's goal would be 24 new, 24 new ultimate clients. That's the goal that we were shooting for. With that in mind, we had to think about the pipeline. Um, how many active, qualified prospects would this advisor need to have 24 uh, to bring in those 24 ultimate clients. I, I tend to double the number. I think the number is about a two to one ratio. For some people, uh, uh, it may be a little bit higher. They need more. They need more like two and a half or three times. But for most advisors that I work with who are serious about 
the ultimate client process, you're good closers. You close at least 50% of the business you bring in. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit longer than you might like. So having a double number is a, a number to optimize your pipeline and doubles your goals is the right way to think about it. Uh, and in the advisor's case that I was talking about before, he has 12 active prospects already in his pipeline. So our goal for getting the pipeline to where it needs to be is to add 36 ultimate client, future ultimate clients, prospects who have the potential to be ultimate clients. So again, just want to keep the numbers uh, simple in terms of thinking about this overall process for building your pipeline and filling your pipeline. When it comes to filling your pipeline, um, I, I put on the screen here somewhat of a small laundry list of ways to do that. Uh, the first way, my favorite way, the way that never fails is advocacy-based introductions, having advocacy conversations with your clients who are the most willing to give you referrals to other potential ultimate clients. Uh, it may just be your current ultimate clients. It may be just 20% of your overall clients who are good referral givers. A lot of ways to skin those numbers, and I'll look at that more in a second. But that's one way to fill your pipeline. Um, I was just on a, a call with a group of, of advisors uh, before we hopped on this web training. Um, our focus for that group, our initial focus for that group and filling their pipeline full of ultimate clients because they're going in to some new markets is centers of influence. And we have a very specific uh, um, set of, of, of um, objectives and activities that we're going to be engaged in through centers of influence to build that group's pipeline. Uh, one of my um, all-time favorite um, uh, pipeline filling activities is that most wanted list. Who are those people that you know that you would love to do business with but you've never spoken with before? That could be a great way to do it. Uh, LinkedIn, using social media can be a way to fill your pipeline. Um, using a lead magnet, uh, writing a book or a white paper or publishing some videos or, or giving out a checklist can be a great way to do it. In fact, many of you who signed up for this webinar did it because I offered you the ultimate client optimization worksheet, a bit of a checklist that helps you with this process. And by seeing that checklist, you were compelled to sit through uh, this hour program to learn more, which is great. Which is That's what I mean by a lead magnet. And of course, uh, there's seminars and direct mail. But I have to tell you, and I know um, this sounds might sound a little bit um, controversial, but I think most advisors who are doing, I would say 98% of advisors who I meet who are doing seminars and direct mail or getting people seminars to direct mail are wasting their money. They're absolutely wasting their money. Um, I've talked with an advisor. Um, again, I, I just had, I've had, I, I, I love doing these presentations because it reminds me of conversations I've had in recent days. I was just talking to an advisor yesterday who had spent over 12 grand, over 12 grand on a series of local television commercials because the ad salesman had convinced him that he was going to get eyeballs. Well, I can tell you something. Eyeballs don't write checks. Eyeballs won't fill your pipeline. The reality is, in this industry, 65% of new client relationships come from client referrals. Some studies I've seen have had this number a little bit lower, some a little bit higher, but I'm happy with 65%. 20% of new business in this industry comes from centers of influence, another form of referral. So 80% of business, 85% of business comes from some sort of referral or introduction from a professional or from a client that is introducing you to somebody that you potentially would like to do business with. 15% comes from other sources. 85% comes from some sort of referral. 15% comes from other sources. 80, 70, 80% of the money that is spent on client acquisition goes to that 15%. It doesn't cost a lot of money to build a good referral system. 
Um, and what I called a minute ago the advocacy process is far and away the absolute best way to fill a pipeline. It never, never fails. Sometimes it takes a little uh, discomfort getting used to doing things a little bit differently in your business, but it never fails. So if, we, if you recall, when I was talking about the 20% growth example a couple of slides ago, I said that the goal of this advisor was to get his pipeline up, to optimize it, to get his pipeline up to 40 ultimate client prospects. Um, and this meant that he needed to bring in an additional 36 prospects to get to where he wanted to be. And what this advisor has decided to do is, is he's decided to hold advocacy conversations with his clients, which will give him an opportunity to tell them how important they are to his business and reinforce how he serves them and add to that a conversation around advocacy, um, showing them, talking to them about the type of people or specifically the people that he would like to be introduced to. And when you have advocacy conversations, my experience, my track record shows that you average two referrals per advocacy conversation. You average two referrals per advocacy conversation. So this advisor holds 47 advocacy conversations. That's probably going to generate over 90 potential leads. Some of those leads won't be ultimate client leads. Uh, so let's just say it's half. So if, it, if only 50% of the leads that he generates are qualified to be future ultimate clients of his, of his practice, he's still going to have 47, 47 um, uh, potential future advocate. <laughs> too many words. <laughs> I'm sorry. He'll have 47 future ultimate clients in his pipeline, which will take his total to 59, and his goal is 48. So just one simple activity, which includes the conversations that he's going to have with his clients, will lead to those kinds of results. You see, when you are using the advocacy process to fill your pipeline, what you're doing is you're maximizing pre-existing opportunities. You're having reviews and having conversations with your ultimate client all the time. And I gave you a reason to have another conversation with them so you can tell them how important they are to you. If you add to that mix the advocacy dialogue, you're going to get the kind of referrals that you need, and that may be the only thing that you need to do to completely fill your pipeline. And you'll have uh, the best type of referral-only practice there is. And you won't waste a lot of money and a lot of time doing other stuff. And the things that influence those opportunities is being prepared, going into those conversations with a little bit of research so that you can make the introduction easy. It's the power of suggestion, helping your client help you not just telling them how important they are, not just reminding them of the service they deliver, but letting them know the type of client that you're looking for that maybe you have uncovered because you've gone on LinkedIn or gone into social media and done some research as to who uh, they know. Um, and that's why I feel that LinkedIn and social media and some of the strategies that come from that can be other great influencers of your advocacy process. And if you create a lead magnet, remember I talked about that a minute ago, um, it's, a lead magnet could be a book. Um, Ron, the example that I showed you earlier, who, who talked about um, how the ultimate client process has impacted his business, wrote a simple book for his clients. That, that was one of the big kickers that, that took him to the point where he said, I, now I have trouble finding enough time to meet with all of my referrals. He used advocacy. He used the ultimate client process. He met with his clients, and he also used the lead magnet to help transfer the information from the client to the potential referral so they were more quickly ready to do business with him. And that's the fourth step of the four-step ultimate client attraction process. Implement your ultimate client attraction plan. Do the math. Pick the system that's going to work best for you make sure the math works, and then build that into your daily activities. 
as I was thinking about this presentation, when to close all of the loops that are out there, it, it made me realize there actually is maybe not a fifth step, but a bonus step to the ultimate client attraction process. Remember in that example, this 100, that 162 clients that uh, my client now needs to make his ultimate client decision over? What do you do about those other clients? Some of you may decide that you just want to find somebody else to take care of. You may have a system for doing all that. Some of you may decide that you're going to not treat them like ultimate clients, but give them a little bit of service just to kind of keep them on board and take the revenues in. And I'm not going to tell you what's best for you on this call, but I would say that oftentimes when you have a large number of other clients, those B clients or C clients or um, whatever your tier is below your, your ultimate client level, some of those clients have the potential to be ultimate clients and you don't know it because you haven't had time to spend with them to determine what the opportunity is. So one of the big things that I do when I'm helping clients make uh, that ultimate client decision is think about what are we going to do with the other clients? Will that give us some of the lift that will help us add to our pipeline? And in some ways, um, those lower tier, smaller clients become part of the ultimate client pipeline. So that's just a, a little bonus thought. That I want to make sure that you keep in mind as you continue to consider how you're going to adapt or adopt the four steps of the ultimate client attraction process. Okay, we're winding down to the end here, so I want you to hang on for just a few more minutes, and then we're going to open it up for questions. Uh, first of all, I, I hope you remember my promise. I told you I would deliver information that you could truly put to work together in right away, just following this webinar, whether we ever talk again or not. I showed you the four-step process. Define your ultimate clients. Show them how important they are. Calculate the growth factor and timeline and implement the action plan, and maybe even take that bonus step. What are you going to do with those other clients? I hope as you think about those steps, implementing those steps, you can see uh, that if you look at this chart and there's any part of your business that falls into the in jeopardy side of the equation, that you have strategies now that can move you to the right, that growth no matter what happens stage of building your business around your ultimate client. So you have two choices. You can maintain the status quo. I think that's the definition of insanity. Or you can try to do it on your own, uh, ignore the opportunity to use a proven system, or you can commit to ultimate client transformation, leverage the system, the steps uh, that I talked about. Um, and, you know, if you're like me, you're, you're, you're on this uh, webinar, you've been listening to what I've had to say, you, you might be wondering, um, you know, what do we do with all this? Is there another, is there something else that you can do with this? Well, that's why I've created, and I mentioned it earlier, something that I've never done before. I call it the Ultimate Client Attraction Program. I'm going to help you define your ultimate clients, show them how important they are, so you can, so you can capture new business while increasing loyalty and build a pipeline filled with future ultimate clients. And so you can add new ultimate clients faster than you ever had before with less stress and it won't matter what the market does, allowing you to transform your business in as little as 90 days. So if you want to build your business around your ultimate clients, create a more loyal following, build massive goodwill, clone your most successful ultimate client relationships, take time, anxiety, and stress out of your business, and grow your business the right way in as little as 90 days, this program that I've built is specifically for you. Here's how we'll do it. This is going to be a five-part course that will take five to six weeks to move through depending on when you get started. There'll be some pre-work and then we'll work through four specific modules. Uh, the pre-work will include sending me the client optimization, attraction optimization work, uh, worksheet so I can send you some feedback, and if we need to, if you want to, we'll get on the phone 
for a one-on-one -on -one call and identify a quick win that may help you um, get a return on your investment in this program before we even get started. In module one, we'll more carefully define, identify, and assess your current ultimate clients so that you can build your business around the clients you enjoy and have a solid foundation for optional grow, optimal growth. In module two, we'll deploy the ultimate client conversation so that your clients never take you for granted so that your story and the way you talk about your business and your ultimate clients talk about your business is repeatable, memorable, and referable. And this will help you minimize the time that it takes to get it done. In module three, we'll uncover your ultimate client success formula to make sure that you're on track for growing the type of business that you're looking for, to make certain that your vision of success will not be derailed so that you spend your time where it matters most. And then finally, in module four, will actually build your pipeline and capture new ultimate clients. I want to be with you as you bring in those new ultimate clients and establish that number one system for building the pipeline that leads you to accomplishing the goals that you set out for yourself. And I've seen this uh, happen in as little as 90 days. I shared an example with you earlier. Using the ultimate client attraction system is a system that can help you transform your business in 90 days. You're going to get the exact same system I use to run a $100 million private client practice in less than 10 hours a week while simultaneously helping lead a group of more than 250 other advisors. It's the same system I teach to countless advisors on how to build client-focused businesses that grow faster in less time without falling prey to the whims of the industry, uh, industry change, and turbulent markets. What's your investment? Well, I like to kind of size that up for a second. I teach what I'm going to uh, unveil and give to you through the Ultimate Client Attraction program uh, to my elite clients, those people that I work with most, close, mo most closely. And they way, invest way more um, in that private elite coaching um, on a monthly basis than you'll put into this program. Um, this, is the, this is the improved version of the system that I told you about the advisor that I work with who um, increased his assets under management by 50% in 90 days. That was worth a, a ton of money. And another way to think about this, and I know a lot of advisors think this way, um, how will I get a return on my money, on the investment that I make in the ultimate client attraction program? Well, frankly, if you add just one new ultimate client and your business is like most of the advisors I work with, you're going to double or triple the return right up front. So this is a very valuable program. Um, and I want to make it affordable. So there are two ways that you can subscribe and sign up for the ultimate client attraction program. The first option um, is two payments of $277. The second option is one payment of $547, a slight of savings if you want to pay it one time. And to do this, all you need to do is jump over to my website, EncorePartners.com, E-N-C-O-R-E, Partners.com, forward slash attraction. Um, and there's a page there that will show you what to do next. So you go to EncorePartners.com, forward slash attraction, choose your payment option, you get a confirmation email with the information that you need to get started. You'll be able to submit your client attraction optimization work, worksheet, schedule your one-on-one -on -one call. As a bonus, I'm going to send you an electronic copy of my book, uh, Delivering the Ultimate Client Experience, and then you'll have access to those web training events and those live Q&A calls that we will do to help you implement the ultimate client attraction process in your business. So when you go to EncorePartners.com forward slash attraction, this is what the web page looks like. Um, the video on that page is, is the stuff that I'm saying right now. It just takes a few minutes. But most importantly, just click the Add to Cart button. Uh, you'll be taken to this page, uh, the shopping cart page. Um, and you can, again, choose your option, uh, sign up, uh, whether it's one payment of 547 or two payments of 277, and we'll be off and running in the ultimate client attraction process. So remember, 
if you want to build your business around your ultimate clients, create a more loyal following, build, a, build massive goodwill, clone your most important relationships, take time, anxiety, and stress out of your business, and grow your business the right way in as little as 90 days, this program is specifically for you. Uh, but it actually gets better because I'm going to guarantee this program. Um, even though this is the first time I'm offering the program this way, I'm going to guarantee the program. If you go through the program for the first 30 days and you don't like it, it's not giving you the results that you want or you just don't get around to it, I'm not going to ask you any questions. Just tell me. Uh, email us and we'll send you your money back. No questions asked. No will and clauses. Your word is gold. So just go to Ultimate Client. I'm sorry, go to EncorePartners.com forward slash attraction and sign up to get the four-part program with the private call, the Q&A calls for the group, my money back promise, um, and I promise you an investment will more than pay for itself if you just add one ultimate client. So that's it. Before we do questions, one more time, go to oncarpartners.com forward slash attraction. Uh, we're going to get started in about a week, so you don't have long to sign up. You can see, although it's not moving on this page, we're going to start this program in about seven days. Um, so I'd sign up right away. Make sure you secure your spot, um, and let's, um, let's get rolling. I'd like to help you make 2016 your best year ever and really be your partner in success, in ultimate client um, success. Okay. I have to apologize. I just went eight minutes over, and I'm, I'm glad you stuck around. Most everybody is still on this call. At this point, I'm going to stop. Uh, for a few minutes and just look at the questions um, that have come into the, um, the chat box um, and, um, and see if there are any specific questions. If you haven't asked a question yet, you can just type one into the uh, question box or the chat box on the screen in front of you. The first question, and this was asked a little bit earlier in the conversation, I just didn't see it, was, does this mean, Rob, we have to get rid of our small clients? The answer to that question is it's up to you. But I have to tell you that if you don't have a system for taking care of your non-ultimate clients while you're focusing your business around your ultimate clients, you have the opportunity to damage your reputation. So when I help clients make that decision and implement this process, we make sure that we don't ignore those other clients. Um, question about um, referrals. Are the referrals the only thing that you teach in the ultimate client attraction system? No, I showed you all of the potential opportunities there are for right-sizing your pipeline and getting your uh, pipeline to the place that it needs to be to get that kind of ultimate client growth uh, that you're looking for. So, um, so when we go through that module and we're looking for what's the best way for you to do that, you're going to have lots of options. Uh, but I'm going to steer you towards advocacy because I can make a really strong case for referrals or introductions through advocacy done the right way. Okay, I, I don't see any other questions in the box. Um, and again, I, I, so let me just stop one more time uh, and, and do two things. One, thank you for spending uh, the time on this call. When I look and see how many of you are still here, uh, based on the number who started, it's awesome. It says to me that we delivered on what we promised in delivering meaningful, actionable ideas. Um, and if you want to send me an email and give me your comments, uh, rob.brown at encorepartners.com. I love it. I love to hear what people think of the events like this. And then the la very last thing I'll say is don't miss this opportunity. This is going to be a great program. I can't wait to lead it. So go to encorepartners.com forward slash attraction, encorepartners.com forward slash attraction, and sign up for the Ultimate Client Attraction Program. I'll help you make 2016 a great year. Thanks, everybody.